Hello, this is Betamax80. Um, it's another slightly unusual video. Um, the video I'm making today is essentially to document the existence of something. Um, it's a computer component, and it's another card produced by Aureal, so it's another sound card. This is actually a sound card and modem combo card for the PCI bus, which in itself is quite unusual. Um, even more unusual to have an Aureal chip on it. It seems to be a chip that's been made, uh, sorry, a card that's been produced by Aureal themselves. I imagine around the same time as my very high-end SQ2500, known as a Super Quad, um, and the other card made by them, the Quadzilla. The difference between those two cards being the uh, the digital SPDIF and the um, coaxial SPDIF connectors on them. All, both of those cards are 4.1 surround cards. This card is very much the other end of the uh, other end of the scale, and I think it was designed to be used by system builders, sort of massive um, capacity system builders, the Dells, the HP, that kind of thing. But I don't think that the traction ever ever happened. Um, also, from what I can tell, this card was produced very late in the life cycle of Oreo, so late nineteen ninety nine to early two thousand. I understand. Um, anyway, I'll show you what it is. This also comes from my um, my supplier in Russia. He seems to have some very interesting cards available. Um, this was actually unfortunately opened, but I'm um, I'm told it's new. It's just open stock. I think it was probably only open to um, take the photo. To be honest with you, it has all the hallmarks of being brand new. So this is an Oriel Soundcom. So it's an audio card with modem. Now for me, I think this card will be extremely useful because as well as supplying a modem and a sound card on one device, it has a slightly rarer feature, especially these PCI generation cards, of actually having a game port on it as well. So it's your game port stroke MIDI connector and sound card and modem. So yes, it's only a two channel sound card but I think that's to be expected. Remember again that this, I think, was designed for system builders. It's just that the system builder companies never really took it up. Um, first thing that shows it's a slightly cost-reduced item is that the uh, the connector symbols are actually printed on, whereas on their higher-end self-produced cards, they're actually etched into the metal plate. So here they are, just printed on stickers i don't know how long they will survive but um that's why i'm showing you this while it's still unused and then you have the card itself um in the right kind of light not very easy to tell in this light maybe if i turn it around yes there we go you can see that the modem circuitry is um physically connected by uh, i believe it's known as a sound wall in the industry um a sound wall so it's separated um, from the audio circuitry to some degree, which is quite interesting. Um, it uses the Oriel Advantage chip, as it's called, the AU8810, for its main sound processor. Just about tell. Yeah. Okay. Um, and this chip is actually, as I understand it, their very last chip. Um, despite the, the model number of the chip being the lowest, you have the 8810, the 8820, and the 8830. Um, the 8820 was the original or real chip, the 80, or the 8808 also before that was the very, 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 very first or real chip. 8810 was sort of there based on the original chip standard. The 8830 was the... Um, Super duper high end Vortex 2 processed A3D2 in hardware. And then this was actually produced last of all. And this is kind of, um, from what I understand, a very much cost reduced version of the Vortex 2 chip. So it's the Vortex Advantage chip. And it only processed A3D 1.0 in hardware, although it could process A3D2 in software. I, um, like I put in the lineup very much like the Sound Blaster live value where the EAX wasn't actually processed in hardware, it was all done via a software support package. I think that's very much how this card is. Um, that anything A3D2 is actually processed entirely in software, but, but the basics are actually um, 
processed in hardware and I believe it's got a few little extensions in the hardware above the uh, Vortex one that allow it to do some um, some management of uh, levels and that kind of thing. There's just a few little extensions that kind of reach out to the, to the software but it doesn't do too much in hardware by itself. That's okay though. It's an interesting little card. It's, I think, the only combo card that was ever produced using an Oreo chip. So it's very interesting. As you can see, it's got um, it's a fully Oreo branded card. So it's definitely another in-house card, I believe, with the A3D sign at the top there, and then actually having the Soundcom logo um, on the bottom there. Okay. Um, it's a V90 modem as well because it actually says so on the sticker. Um, it's got a part number of BA88AC10AD-01. Um, there is a sticker on the back of it. As I say, this is a bit of a documentation video, as I say, because there's not very much on the internet about these cards, and I'm almost proving the existence of them. Um, again, it's an Oriel ink sticker, so I believe this was another in-house card because this is very much the same kind of additions as my SQ2500, which I which I know to be an in-house card. Um, yeah, sound card, Soundcom OEM made in China. Fair enough, I say. Okay, so um, I've found out through my own sort of looking into the driver software that the modem components, although I can't see a single real marking on them um, is basically a, a uh, Motorola SM56 so that's a Motorola soft modem um, or real have done some clever driver um, fudging basically to actually make the modem software see that the card is a subsystem of the sound card um, I've actually found much newer software produced by Motorola for the modems that are actually WDM compliant and actually give the modem V92 functionality but I think it's going to be a problem um, when it comes to accessing the subsystem of the sound card so I have produced without having the card this only arrived today I've actually produced what I hope is an ink file that will actually integrate the newer modem software with the with the sound card subsystem itself um, only by looking at what there is in your real driver and in the Motorola driver and trying to combine the two um, I'm going to try it and find out I'm, I'm really hoping it works because it would be really nice to have the, the newer functionality I also know that these software based modems were very very tricky customers in the 1990s it wasn't until the very very sort of end of life with modems that they actually became uh, a feasible option partly because they needed really high processing power anything socket 7 based is basically out of the question for a software modem I'm talking as someone who's tried it this is from experience um, you really need an Athlon or Pentium probably Pentium 3 class system to actually power one of these software modems um, without too much of a performance hit really probably around the 600 megahertz kind of range is where you need to be starting from really nothing less than that and nothing less than than a, a higher grade um, system not a socket 7 and certainly nothing lower than that um, what did it come with? well it comes with its own software and it comes with the modem cable this is how many of these types of cards came looks very more sort of almost looks more like a modem package than than a sound card package to be honest with you also comes with its own CD this is another reason I know it's an Oreo in-house card because it's got its own branded CD that specifically mentions it as a sound com and the same with the uh, installation guide okay um, but it's, it's very basic as I say but it's also very interesting because I think this must be one of the last combo cards ever produced certainly one of the last to actually include a game port that's extremely rare on these um, sound card modem combo cards so it's a very interesting interface and it provides an awful lot in one PCI slot my personal interest in this is because of the uh, via Epi system I'm trying to build which only has two PCI expansion slots um, so I'm interested about having a combination of Oriel Sound 
plus a game port, which isn't provided by the Epi board, plus a modem, because that again isn't provided. So having three peripherals in one PCI slot is of interest to me. So I think this will be very interesting. Also to document, um, the inputs on this are most interesting. Um, we do have CD in and we do have AUX in and there's a missing header that says video in. I have no idea what this was going to be for, but it's obviously a blank. It looks like there was going to be some sort of consideration of perhaps MPEG-2 processing, something like that. You know, the sound the sound portion of MPEG-2 processing, Some I have no idea. I would like to know more about it, but there is very, very little information on this card, which again is why I'm trying to document as much as I can. So this is the card. Now the other thing that's interesting is that the drivers on the CD and the CD is actually very basic compared to my SQ2500 driver. Very, very basic. Um, the only driver that's provided is for Windows 95 and 98. And that's pretty much it. And when it comes to the um, publicly released drivers for this card, there was only modem support in the Windows 95 and 98 version of the driver. Um, the Windows 9X drivers with all real cards always seem to be the uh, most developed. So that sort of stands to reason. However, I've done a lot of quite deep digging on the internet and I've come across some um, strange, well not strange, very useful actually, but some drivers that were released for a very obscure Asus laptop and I was curious about this because I only came around the came by the Windows 2000 driver due to somebody saying I can't get my Soundcom working with um, Windows 2000. This was on a very very basic text based forum um, where he actually listed his emails to and from Oriel. Um, this is for um, these were released, let's say, on the on the Asus website for an a laptop called the L84K. So it's a 1999, I guess, 2000 laptop that seems to use both the modem and sound components of this card, I assume in chip form. So it's even more obscure than this. Um, but the interesting thing is that the drivers all support the modem um, for, this, for this laptop. They're all later revisions than have previously been um, documented and all of the drivers support the modem portion of the sound card so that's a Windows 9X, Windows ME, Windows 2000 and Windows NT4 all of these have components for the modem with this card so I think these drivers are extremely interesting and these are the ones I've been working on and the ones I've been sort of editing about and seeing if I can update the modem support on them. Um, as I say, I've also been on archive.org and found much later drivers for the Motorola modem. It seems that they actually had a uh, kind of a revisit of the SM56 modem in sort of 2004 to 2007 era. There was obviously a renewed need for them for a short period of time. And I actually have a driver for it from 2007. What's interesting is it actually has support all the way up to Windows Vista. And I've looked on the Microsoft Update site and there's support all the way up to Windows 10 for it actually, which is quite impressive. Um, the pro trouble with that is that it's now tied to the sound card and the sound card drivers due to the um, collapse of Aurel in late 2000, they were only written up to Windows 2000. So the fact that the modem can support a higher operating system is almost irrelevant because the sound card function needs to work first for the modem function to to work. But it's very interesting. Um, but all mention of Aurel in the Motorola drivers has disappeared. So this is why I've tried to merge the um, device strings for the Aurel devices into the updated Motorola drivers. We will see. Anyway, I, I can now say that um, having found these Asus drivers, this sound card, this sound card modem, which was previously only known to support Windows 95 and 98, now supports Windows 95, 98, and with the newly found drivers, Windows ME, Windows NT4, and Windows 2000, which is quite a broad scope, actually. It's just as good as any of their other cards. 
So I'm very, very, very interested to see um, to see how that goes. I hope this has been interesting. As I say, this, um, as I've said a few times now, this video is really just to document the existence of this car because there's very little information out there. Hope it's of interest to somebody. And I will link to the uh, the updated Asus drivers that I found and my modified drivers in the description box, hopefully. Thanks for watching. Bye.